In this video, we're going to take a look at understanding half tones and raster image processing. I'm going to lay a foundation from which you can have a clear understanding of how images are ripped or raster image processed into half tones and why we want to be able to print with half tones. Very important in screen printing. For those of you that are new to screen printing or just getting started, this will be a very important session. For those of you that are experienced screen printers, you might find that you pick up some information understanding here that perhaps you weren't aware of. Working in the screen printing industry for decades now, one of the things I've really become aware of is that there's a lot of bad information and disinformation in the industry relating to RIP software, half tones, and screen printing. I've heard some of the supposed gurus or the actual management and very large supply companies presenting information that really is coming from very poor or very little understanding relating to half tones ripping, how they're processed, color separations, etc. So what I want to do in this session is lay a foundation from which we can start into our training relating to halftone, ripping halftones and printing with halftones and doing color separations with halftones, working with Simple Step Smart Rip. To get started here, I want to take a look at what a halftone is and how we generate or rip images into halftones. Where do halftones come from? And the real foundation for halftones is found in the halftone cell. A halftone cell is a square grid of information based on DPI or pixel information. Here I've got a halftone cell set up as a graphic here in my Corel Draw. And you can see I've got five squares by five squares in this grid. So that if it was one inch, this would be a five DPI image. Obviously very low re resolution, but I wanted to set this up this way for demonstrative purposes. We obviously wouldn't rip our halftones at 5 dpi. Now that gives me 25 squares or pixels. Now here I have my pixel spots and this one is converted to black. Actually 13 of these 25 are converted to black and that would be my halftone dot. These other 12 here around the corners are actually staying white so they're not part of the halftone dot. Now this conversion would be about a 52 or 53 percent of grayscale density converted to halftones. Now next to that over here I have my recorder grid which would be how the software would be going through recording information in grids and converting it to halftones. Now here I have 25 halftone dots set up on 5x5. Five five. Now interestingly you can see these cells here we got one, two, three, four, five cells that would be five lines if this was a square inch or five LPI, lines per inch. So we have a cells or actual halftone cells set up in our lines and we process in grids to halftones. Let's go a little bit more in depth here and we can take a look at some of the mathematics and I'm not going to get into deep mathematics here, I want to keep it simple so that everybody can understand. Halftone cell and grayscale density conversions. Now I built these out by hand, these circles aren't the best, I just did this by hand for demonstrative purposes, but this will help me to explain. This grid wouldn't be here, and actually these pixels would be converted to a black, not a blue, but I used the blue for demonstrative purposes. Here I've got a rectangle that's set up with a 1% gray or black fill, and that conversion would result in six of the pixels being turned black to make my halftone dot. Here again, we're at low resolution. This would be a 25 DPI image. Obviously, wouldn't rip at that, but I'm working in low resolution for demonstrative purposes to help you understand how halftones are generated and how they work and some of the math behind them and what goes on with them. Now, here I've got a 10%, and here I'd convert 62 of my pixels to the halftone dot here, giving me a round dot, this conversion here. Here we go up through the density of color, 20%, 30%, 40%. And you can see as we go up, more of our pixels are converted to black. Processing or raster image processing through pixels into halftones, all the way up to 100%, which would be all of the pixels in the cell converted to black or 100% of the color. Halftone cells and LPI. Here we've got our LPI set up at 10. 10% here and we can see we would have our cells here, our halftone cells, and we'd have 10 lines or 10 LPI and that's how LPI works, lines per inch and then as that fills in we can see we go up to 100% data and we've got this gradient here going from 10% to 100% and the objective of all of this is to be able to 
print a simulation of continuous tone images even though we're printing let's say one color black on a white t-shirt. Here we've got a continuous tone image with Marilyn Monroe and a grayscale gradient set up here to the right and if we look in say here at her eyelashes and eye we can see some different tints of gray here in color and it becomes lighter. Now if we see what happened in the halftone conversion over here we can see that some of our bigger dots start to go out into some of our smaller dots as we go into the lighter regions of the image or simulation of continuous tone printing with just one color. Now here it is converted to a CMYK and blurred. Now these bitmap halftones don't render very well in CorelDRAW because of the way the software presents the halftone or the one bit image through your monitor on your computer. But once you convert these to say a CMYK or an RGB bitmap, they look more like what you'd see when you've printed the actual halftone image on your screen printing press on say a white t-shirt. We can see the simulation of gray coming down through here based on the density and size of dots or the LPI and the size of dots. And then we start to get a representation of the continuous tone even though we're printing with just solid black. And what happens here is that your eye when it sees these dots from a distance it can't make them out. So it starts to make up information in your brain giving you the illusion of all these different grays because your brain saying well there would be gray here this would be a light gray because it can't make out the light colored dot. So through the half tone ripping software we're creating images converting them through the raster image process to half tones so that we can print an illusion of a continuous tone image with just one color because if we try to print this Marilyn Monroe image with all the different grays that are in here we need a screen printing press that had maybe 150 or 200 different colors on it we'd be printing very small pixels but working with the technology of half tones we can create the illusion of continuous tone imagery through half tone printing and screen printing and just to demonstrate here we'll go ahead and take this image of Marilyn that we have down here with the grayscale gradient that we have off to the side and we'll go ahead and convert this to half tones. I'll go to my advanced tools, I'll go to my simple steps, I'll go to the half tone tab. Here we have color management separation. We can actually rip our separations. I'll go to half tone here. We'll go with 1440 DPI so our cell will have 1440 pixels in it that we can convert at high resolution. Of course you can change this if your printer can support 1440. We'll go with an angle of 22.5. I'll cover angle in another session and we'll go with an LPI of 45 or the lines per inch as we saw here. We'll go for all black because we support the all black output with simple steps. And I'll go ahead in here and I'll select convert to half tone. Right here and we'll go ahead and click on that and that'll process that directly in CorelDRAW. Now I like to rip in my graphics application because I like to get a preview of my half tones before I print the films out. You know, with the other RIP solutions that we have in the industry, you can't preview. You just hit print and then what you get out on your film and go to press with is all that you have to work with. Well, if you've got an issue in your halftones and you get to press and that's where you find out about the issue, then you've got to go back, fix things, reclaim screens, you're going to lose time and you're going to waste supplies. However, by printing in my application, I get a preview before I go to film, not to mention all the other features that I have with the Simple Steps Smart Rip. Now once that's processed, we can see that this doesn't look very good the way it's rendering in CorelDRAW. As I said, the one-bit images don't render very well. Now you can zoom in on these and inspect them very closely relating to your halftones and how they're output. But if you want to get a better preview of how this looks in CorelDRAW or a better rendering of it as the software, you can simply go to Bitmaps, convert to Bitmap, go with RGB 300 DPI and we'll go ahead and select OK and we'll let that process. And here we get a much better representation of how our halftones are going to look like as they simulate the continuous tone image in the screen printing process. And we can see how we're going through here and how we get the illusion of different shades of color as our eye is making up that color because it can't make out the fineness of the small dots through the color representation of what our brains interpret as we look at these images or halftone printing. So I just want to lay a foundation here in this session for half tones and understanding half tones. We'll go ahead and wrap here and we'll continue in our next session relating to working with 
half tones and color separations and our simple sets tools in CorelDRAW.